Hello and welcome. My name is William. Today I want to take some time and look at some source code on how to find the lowest common ancestor of two nodes in a tree. This video implements the concepts in the previous video where we looked at how to construct an Eulerian tor around a tree and query the lowest common ancestor. If you haven't already watched the explanation video, make sure to go and give that a listen and come back. All the source code you see today can be found on GitHub at github.com slash slash algorithms. All right, here we are in the source code for the lowest common ancestor written in Java. Let's begin by going over an example of how this class is intended to be used. In the main method, I give three examples of how to do lowest common ancestor queries. The first thing we need to do is actually build a rooted tree. In this example, I am reusing the first tree from the slides in the previous video. After we've created the tree, you can pass the tree into the lowest common ancestor Euler Tor constructor. At the moment, each instance of this class is only meant to handle one tree. So if you want to do lowest common ancestor queries on multiple trees, you need multiple solvers. After the solver is created, you can use it to do lowest common ancestor queries. In the following example, I do three queries to find the LCA of 13 and 14, the LCA of 9 and 11, and the LCA of 12 and 12. Let's scroll down to the implementation and take a closer look. The first class I want to take a look at is the tree node class. You'll notice that this class is mostly the same as before, except that it has a new variable n, which tracks the number of nodes in the subtree of this tree node, including the node itself. A tree node also has an index and a list of children. Most of the methods in this class are accessor methods. The only thing we need to take a look at are some of the minor changes I made to the build tree method since the rooting tree video. In the build tree method, you'll notice that I'm now counting the number of nodes in the subtree of the current node. For our purposes, this effectively serves as a nice way to know how many nodes there are in the tree from the root node. Moving on, I want to talk about some of the instance variables in this class. The first is n, the number of nodes in the tree, which is followed by the tor index variable, which tracks the index of where we are in the Eulerian tor as we traverse the tree. The node depth and the node order arrays are populated during the Eulerian tor. They serve to track the depth of each node and a pointer to each node for each index position in the Eulerian tor. The last map helps keep track of the last occurrence of a node in the Eulerian tor. And finally is the min sparse table class to do range minimum queries. When creating an instance of the LCA solver, you need to provide the root node of the tree you want to do lowest common ancestor queries for. From the root node, assign n to be the number of nodes in the tree and call the setup method. The setup function is responsible for allocating memory and constructing the Eulerian tor. Begin by allocating memory for our three arrays, node order, node depth, and last. Then do a depth first search on the tree to construct the Eulerian tor. After this, create a sparse table using the node depth array, which was populated during the Eulerian tor. The depth first search method is the one that actually performs the Eulerian tor. As parameters, it tracks the current node and the node depth. When the current node becomes null, we know that we have reached our base case and can return. Otherwise, visit the current node and iterate over all its children recursively. The inner visit function call ensures that after visiting a subtree, that we revisit the current node. This is essential to get the desired Eulerian tor effect and to traverse the tree as expected. The visit function itself is responsible for populating the arrays associated with the Eulerian tor. In particular, this function will update the nodes array to keep track of pointer to the current node, and it will also update the depth array to track 
the current depth. And it will also update the inverse mapping to the or there in tor index. So a lot of things going on in the visit function. Next is the LCA method, which finds the lowest common ancestor of two nodes with the indices index one and index two. The first thing we want to do is look inside our last map and find the indices in the Orlean tor associated with index one and index two. From these values, we can extract a left and a right endpoint. To make sure that the left endpoint always appears before the right endpoint, take the min and the max of the indices. After we know the left and the right endpoints, simply do a range minimum query to find the index of the minimum element in the range L to R. We can do this using the sparse table we created in the setup method. And lastly, return the tree node object for the lowest common ancestor found in the nodes array. Below is an implementation of a min sparse table, but I'm not going to cover that in this video since I have a dedicated video on sparse tables in my data structure series. If you're interested in that, I'll make sure to leave a link below. So guys, thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. Please like this video and subscribe for more mathematics and computer science content. Thank you.